All right, how's everybody? Happy that it's Friday, right? We all are happy about that, I bet. So we have just one single break tonight. That's going to be a little Diamond Kings baseball. And uh, as it stands right now, there are a handful of unpaid teams. How shocking, right, that people bid and don't pay. It's uh, such a shocking development. I'm sure you find that hard to believe. <laughs> But anyway, we'll see if they manage uh, any of them to actually take the time to pay their bill between now and the time we start. And if not, then we're going to have to try to beg and borrow and steal and find homes for the four or so teams that are currently sitting unpaid. But we'll go over those again uh, in a little bit. First things first, we're going to go over some information to make sure that we are all on the same page here before we actually get started ripping. So while everybody's getting in and getting settled, let's go over that. My feedback is automated. Anytime you leave positive feedback for me, you are instantly going to get the same in return. So that's a big win-win. And the other thing there is to say thank you. I always appreciate you being here, bidding, breaking, chatting, and hanging out with me on this Friday night. Let's take a look now and uh, see what's coming up in the days ahead. So Saturday and Sunday are both off nights. On Monday night, we're going to come back with score football. We'll break it by the half case. That's going to be six boxes. They are loose boxes from shared cases. And Veteran Base does not ship to the teams. Veteran Base does have its own bidding spot. So you don't have to... Uh, well, you won't get veteran base unless you go and win and bid that on that particular spot. So you don't don't overlook that if veteran base is something you want. It talks about it more in the listing description, of course. On select baseball, which will be Tuesday night, we're going to break that by the full case. We have previously broken that by the half case, and this time we're just going to go all in and break the full thing. On Wednesday night, we're going to break noir basketball by the full case, and maybe some Prism Baseball. It says TBA because it's not listed yet because I was unable to get confirmation today from any of my distributors if it is actually going to be on time or not. So I don't know yet if we're going to break that Wednesday or if I'll try to defer it to Thursday in case it arrives late. I don't quite know what to do with that one. So it's a TBA, but the Noir Basketball is up already. So here's what you need to know about what we're working on tonight. Of course, it is a 12-box inner case. Inner case simply means uh, a 12-box sealed case. Panini puts two of those in a bigger case and calls it a master case. That's how they work with some of their products. And this should ship out to you on or before Wednesday. I'm always going to try to do the before, but in case I can't, I think Wednesday would be the latest it would go out, barring any catastrophic events that would be, of course, unforeseen. I don't think we need to worry about consolation cards in here because there's quite a few cards and all the cards ship and I believe that every team will be able to pull cards in. We won't have uh, any, any problems in that regard. Now I will bring you back to me for a moment and I'm going to go back and check and see where we stand on our unpaid stuff. Jay Allen's here. Jeremiah's here. Yes, Jeremiah, I got yours. You are good to go. T-Man is here, and so is Go Reds, and Jose is here as well. So we've got quite a few people in chat tonight, which is awesome. Let's go see what didn't get paid for tonight. Um, it looks like, oh, well, we're down from what was four or five teams a while ago. Now we're down to only two, so that's an improvement. And that would be the Braves and the Angels. I started to say Dodgers. That's not right. Braves and Angels that are unpaid. And the Braves sold for 40. Let me see what the Angels sold for. Give me one second. It looks like the Angels sold for 55. So the Braves for 40, the Angels for 55. Those teams, uh, no payment came in. So if anybody wants to pick up either of those teams, they are both available. And if you give me one second here, I need to update our spreadsheet and get that taken care of. All right, so give me just one moment, please. And we'll get that all squared away. Um, all right. All right. 
All right, so who did I say it was again? The Braves and the Angels, right? Yeah, Braves and the Angels. Okay, Braves and Angels. And let's see what, what transpires there. Oh, New York Islanders, yeah, you're all good. We've got, I see you uh, jumped in there and said you've got the Mets. Yeah, you're good with the Mets. We're all squared away there. It's the Angels and the Braves uh, that are setting open at the moment. And looks like uh, T-Man is willing to pick up the Braves. And then I just need to find a home for the Angels. And it looks like JP's got the Cardinals tonight. Welcome, JP. So the Braves, the Braves, the Braves. We've got a home with T-Man. I need to find a home for the Angels, who might be kind enough to pick up the Angels for us tonight in this little break. While we see uh, what's happening there. And Jason's here too. Hi, Jason. He's wishing everybody good luck. Yeah, we're just in a little bit of a holding pattern right now, guys. We are trying to find homes for uh, still one more team that is unpaid. Um, and I will type it in too. Some people have the volume down uh, usually. And so we'll type it in there for them as well. But I need somebody to give the Angels a home, please. Seems like more and more this happens, doesn't it? Like almost every night these days we have at least one or two unpaid teams, sometimes more. It's super frustrating because it slows everything down and like the majority of the people are great and you pay your stuff on time and we could be ready to go. And then it's that one person or those two people that don't pay and then it just holds us all up. Yeah, T-Man, I will put that in there in a minute. I'm trying to find a home for the Angels first, but since they are both from the same bidder, I need to move them either both or neither. You know what I mean? I can't really do one and then not the other. So I've either got to move both the teams or move neither of the teams because unfortunately they are both the exact same bidder in this instance. So, angels, angels, anybody, anybody. No, no takers from the angels. All right, well, then I guess we'll just uh, move onward then. So, I know that you were willing to pick them up for the Braves, and I appreciate that. Um, but, again, I can't, unfortunately, T-Man, since it's the same bidder, I've got to either cancel them both or cancel neither. And in this instance, um, it looks like nobody wants the Angels, so I'm kind of uh, stuck where I am, and we'll just have to hope that eventually maybe this person will come along and pay or something. I don't know. I don't even know who it is. I can't, I don't, I'm just looking at the, I'm not logged in. I can just see that the eBay username, so hopefully they'll, you know, get sorted with it. So anyway, um, thank you T-Man for your willingness, but since nobody wanted the angels, I guess that's where we roll. So here's the deal. Um, once again, for those of you who maybe came in while we were debating these unpaid teams, Wednesday's when I hope to have this out the door, uh, maybe before, but shouldn't be after that unless something catastrophic that I'm not expecting happens. And, of course, Constellation cards won't come into play here. Tons of cards in this break. Everybody should have some. And this is a 12-box inner case break of 2020 Diamond Kings Baseball. This is break number two. And it ended tonight on eBay the same night that we are breaking it, which is Friday night, the 12th of June. Our team names are there on the left-hand side. Our winning bidders cross from each team on the opposite side. And then, of course, the Braves and the Angels, our unpaid teams in here. Everyone else, you're going to see your eBay user ID across from your team there. So, all right, so that gets us uh, squared away there. And I've got to do one other little thing here, which is to change up the focus. Yes, I know, I know. I've got to tweak it a little bit if my settings will ever pop up here. And you're going to notice that your background is about to get a little bit blurry, maybe a lot blurry, but that is intentional. So I don't want you to worry about that. Background should be blurry. It's going to let us see our cards up a little closer, though, in the meantime. Um, oh, T-Man, you were asking on the angels. Um, 
Oh, were they the ones that were 55? One of those teams was 40, and the other one went for 55. I want to say it was the Braves that originally sold at 40, and I think that it was the Angels then that sold originally at 55. I think that's right. I'd have I'll have to would have to go look to tell you that for sure, but I think that's the case. Ah, see, look at that. Ha ha, faster. Last the last time. <laughs> I was digging around down in that box trying to get these things out of there and they did not want to come out and so this time yes buddy we just dumped them right out from the bottom i like that plan better yes i do faster is better when it comes to unnecessary tasks like opening wrappers and getting boxes out of cases doesn't it all right and t-man do you want me to go look that up for you hang on a second I can uh, check that real quickly. I want to say that that's what it was, though, 40 and 55, but I'll double check it for you. Hang on. And the survey says, yeah, and then something else popped up. <laughs> 40 and the angels were at 55, so they were combined at 95. All right. So that is where we were. So, T-Man, you want to do 80 for both of them? Um, yeah, we can do that, I guess. Um, give me one second here. I've got to end it on eBay, and I've got to type in your information, in, uh, type in PayPal information for you and all that kind of stuff and update the spreadsheet. So let's get, uh, let me get back over there where I need to be. And give you some info. All right, so this is going to give you the Angels and the Braves, both, and 80 for, for the pair then. I swear, these people that bid and don't pay cost me a fortune every year. So if you would send that over to PayPal, if you would please, while you are doing that, I'm going to get it closed out here real quickly on eBay and get the spreadsheet updated and all that fun stuff. And then we'll start looking at uh, what we've got coming up next. So give me just a second here to get my part of things taken care of. All right, because I do have to log in to do this part. Well, come on out of there. All right, so I got that part A done. We're getting there. Now let's get over here and update part B so that I know what is what. Alrighty, almost ready guys. Thank you for your patience and gals. Always takes us a few extra minutes when we're working on the uh, unpaid stuff, which I know is a bit of a drag. I know it is. We shall be able to just rock on down the road here, I think. All right, and you said you're good to go on your side. Okay, perfect. Then we are ready to go. Ready to go. Now, we have to make sure it's worth everybody's time, right? <laughs> we had a little delay at the start, finding a home for our, our unpaid orphans. So now we need to find some fire in here and make it worth it for the, for the wait, right? Yeah, that's the idea. Jose, it's your second time breaking with us. Well, welcome back. Glad to have you again. Tell, us who, tell me who you have again tonight. I know some of you typed it in. Were you brewers? But it's so far back up in the chat, I can't see it right at the moment. But I know somebody was looking for Brewers Mojo, somebody for Cardinals. Jay Allen usually has the Phillies, and I think he has several other teams in here tonight, too, if I remember right. And who else is looking for some Mojo tonight? Jay Allen, I agree. T-Man does need some hits tonight to uh, help help uh, repay his kindness for picking up our unpaid teams. So I agree with you. 
we definitely need to find a little mojo for our angels and our braves in here too. And Jason, it's your second time as well. All right. Well, welcome back to you too, Jason. Who, who are we rooting for for you? Oh, Jay Allen, you've got Diamondbacks, Giants, Rangers, and Phillies. That is a big long list. All right, I'm getting a few sleeves out on the table here to get ready for all these uh, smoking hot hits that we're going to hopefully find so we can get them all nice and happily protected. And let's get to it. So, there are going to be players in here, quite a few of them, from old school teams, okay? So, there are, for instance, um, well, that actually, he is actually a Red Sox by trade, but there are some in here that say Boston that are really the Boston Braves. Now, when we find the Boston Braves, like Eddie Matthews here, he was a Boston Brave originally. So, the Boston Braves of old... I forgot to switch my view over here. Sorry. Let me just fix this real quickly. Well, I'm trying to fix this real quickly, and it's not wanting to let me for some reason. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> what is the problem here? That is super weird. Um, alrighty, good times. Now I can see it finally. So the Boston Braves of old are the current Atlanta Braves. Now I can't see it again. I have no idea what's going on over there, but I'm starting to get frustrated. I'm going to tell you straight up. <laughs> I'm getting very frustrated right now because my computer is locking up and it is not wanting to let me. It's not wanting to let me do anything that I need to do to be able to see the break. Windows updated itself, fair warning, this morning. And when it did, it made a big hot mess of everything. And I thought I had it all fixed, and I guess I didn't. So the Eddie Matthews will go to the Braves because former Boston Braves, current Atlanta Braves. This guy, Mel Ott, and a bunch of his buddies that say New York are actually those old school New York guys are really New York Giants, which are current day San Francisco Giants. So that's where those will go. We will find some Washington Senators in here. And the Senators are actually two different teams, became two different teams. The early Senators, which went through, I think, like 1960, were the Twins. The second run-through of the Senators, which began in 1961 and went through, I don't know, 70 or so, they became the Rangers. There's a framed for the Oakland A's with Sheldon Noose. So when we find Washington Senators in this particular product, I think they are all the earlier versions, which would mean, of course, that they would go to the Rangers, the first, the first group of Washington Senators. And we may have a few, or I mean the Twins, sorry, the Twins were the first group of Washington Senators. I just said that the first time and said it backwards the second time. Still distracted by my camera problems over there. Kyle Lewis comes out with our first autograph hit, and that, of course, is the Seattle Mariners. And if I didn't tell you this already, we're looking for two autograph or memorabilia cards per box. You'll notice it says, on average, down there in little print, that on average serves two purposes. One, it is a bit of a CYA in case tops were to short us a hit, which has been known to happen from time to time. So, little artist palette insert Vlad Guerrero Jr., Toronto Blue Jays. And the other thing it would apply to is if we were to find rewards points. And sometimes those show up and they replace a hit when we find them. And if that happens, we will use rewards points, uh, use random.org to give those out at the end of the night. This guy uh, played in an early league that, of course, did not become a major, did not become affiliated, his team, with any current MLB team. So he sets off by himself over here. We got to make him a space in housekeeping. And we'll use random.org to give away all the Mule Settles cards at the end of the break. One team will get all of those. 
Cattell Marte with a framed card there for the Arizona Diamondbacks. More inserts, the ones that aren't numbered, we don't worry about flipping them over. If we run across some that are numbered, of course, we will know that and check those, check out the numbering. Otherwise, we kind of keep on trucking. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Ah, it was the Brewers for Jose. Good. Yay. I remembered that. Okay. That makes me happy. New York Islanders need some Mets. All right. We're going to work on the Mets for you. And um, Jason needs the, uh, the Red Sox. T-Man now needs White Sox, Padres, Tampa Bay Rays, the Blue Jays, the Angels, and the Braves. He's got a big hit list. That is Javi Baez and the Cubbies. So there's our two hits out of box number one because they give us that sneaky little ore in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Autograph or relic. Truthfully, I think every box we opened the first time was one autograph and one relic. I don't think we had any that were two relics. And I don't think we had any that were two autographs that I remember anyway. A framed Jake Rogers. That is the Detroit Tigers. Another artist palette. Uh, and that is Yachty Molina for the Cardinals, of course. Oh, one other team thing in here, too. There are some Philadelphia A's. And, of course, the Philadelphia A's ultimately became the Oakland A's. The card itself will just say Philadelphia. But, again, it's the old school guys that some of them really are going to the Oakland A's because they were Philadelphia A's, not Philadelphia Phillies. And I'll try to point those out as we go through if I run across them. They're generally base cards. We might find a framed one or two. But if I can uh, catch them when we go through, I will point them out. Um, Jose, you said, is Bo Bichette a short print? You know, I don't know if he is or not. Did I, we hit him in the first break, didn't we, guys, of this? Did we hit Bo Bichette? I'm pretty sure we did. I hit him real recently in something. I want to say it was probably this. And I don't remember base-wise what he was, if he was, if there was or wasn't much for him in the way of base. But we had a hit for him, I'm pretty sure in the first break we did of this, but I don't know if he's a short print. He might be. I don't know for sure. And Thomas has joined us. Hi, Thomas. You say, come on, M's. Are we talking Mariners there? Because there are, you know, other teams with M, too, but I know our Mets are accounted for, so I'm thinking maybe, maybe you're looking for some Mariners. Jay Allen's looking for another one of one. Yeah, I just packaged that up, Jay Allen. I haven't got the labels printed yet because I still have three or four more teams to get packaged up to ship. But I did get yours done earlier, and I put your I put your little one of one all nice and cozy in the envelope. So that'll be getting out the door and on the way to you tomorrow. Should be provided nothing unusual happens between now and then. That is Joe DiMaggio with the framed for the Yankees. An aficionado. That insert we see a lot. And, of course, those all-time Diamond Kings. We've already seen several. We will see several more before it is all said and done. When we get finished, it'll, we will have seen plenty by then. But I hope we can find another one of one. That would make me happy if we can. Because we've been on a bit of a roll lately, right? With the one of ones, we've hit a bunch of them recently. So maybe we'll hit some more. Um, you said, what's the rarest insert in this set? The cut signatures. If we found a cut signature, it would be by far the hardest thing to pull out of Diamond Kings is any of the cut signatures. They're really hard to pull. 
This is Trace Barrera, and it is out for the Washington Nationals. So autograph out of box number two. We still have one more hit left to find in here somewhere along the way. Can't be too much. We've just got a little bit left, so it can't be too far in the offing. There is a framed Trent Grisham that is for the San Diego Padres. We'll find lots of framed cards, of course, as we go to. You've already gotten a pretty good sampling of those, but there'll be plenty more. The Yankees are on the horizon. It is an Aaron Judge, I'm going to assume, relic because we've seen the autograph. So it is a Jersey Kings relic for Aaron Judge and the Yankees. So you guys said, yes, we did hit a Boba Shet in the first part. I thought we did. All right. So, yeah, T-Man and J. Allen both were here for that and remember that. So, but that I still don't know if that means he's a short print or not, though. But I do, I did think we hit him in there. And we did. Tell you what, I may just leave these framed cards after the fact because there are so many and it does take a while to stop and do it if you add it all up. But all right, Mickey Cochran. Now, Mickey here is an example of a Philadelphia A. So the card says Philadelphia on it, but it is not the Philadelphia Phillies. Mickey Cochran was a Philadelphia Athletic, and the Philadelphia A's are the Oakland A's. So, Mickey Cochran, for example will be sent to Oakland because that is um, the current name and location of the franchise, the Philadelphia A's. That's, I, that is the weird thing about this set. You do have to kind of pay attention to some of that detail, I guess is the right way to say it, and know a little bit about your, at least some basic franchise history when you deal with this product, otherwise stuff would go to the wrong spot. Jose, you said one per case. You think the Beau Bichette is only one per case? I didn't realize that. How did I overlook that if that's the case? Thomas, this is our second break, yes, of Diamond Kings. We did an inner case break of this on, when, what is today, Friday? Yeah, <laughs> on Wednesday night when it came out. And then another 12-box inner case, of course, we're working on right now tonight. And then we'll have more of it coming. We'll probably break it again in a week or so, I'm going to guess. Depending on what else comes out next week, I the release schedule is honestly still so messed up. Panini is showing that we're supposed to get Prism Baseball on Wednesday, but then none of my distributor partners could confirm that for me today. And normally one of them, at least one of them, would already have it in hand at one of their locations, and they don't. So I don't know if it's going to be delayed, if it's not, and I don't want to get us into another mess like we were when, when Bowman got moved with 48 hours notice. So I don't know. We may or may not break schedule a prison baseball break for Wednesday or Thursday. We may just wait and schedule it later. I don't know. So it depends on how that falls as to when we will break Diamond Kings again. But we will be breaking it again. All right, what else are we looking for in here? Lots of stuff. We're looking for tons of stuff, aren't we? Joe DiMaggio framed for the Yankees. And it looks like we have got one of our hits upon us. But judging by the way it feels, I think it's going to be our autograph. It's not a thick card. And you have a little Diaz ink headed to the Colorado Rockies. So, yeah, little Rockies in there. Jose, you were told that there's only one Beau Bichette per case, as in per 12-box case or one in a 24-box quote-unquote master case. 
So if there's either way, that's still a pretty short print. So maybe we pulled uh, something even, well, <laughs> something even better than we knew that we got on Wednesday night, possibly. Gary Carter. And Gary Carter is an expo on this card. And so here's the deal with the Montreal Expos. They became the Washington Nationals. So that and any other Montreal Expos card that we might pull will, of course, go to the Nationals. A framed Trent Grisham for the Padres, which I think we might have already seen one of those. I feel like we did. And a bunch more base. Lots of base in here. But fun base, anyway. There's another Mickey Cochran, once again, Philadelphia A's, which means Oakland A's, not the, not the Phillies on that one. Which I think Jay Allen probably already knows. He's got about all that stuff memorized, too. He's probably heard me say it about, I don't know, conservatively 8,000 times. <laughs> He's heard me say a lot of times over the over the years, I'm sure. Ooh, Jay Allen wants the Nolan Ryan autograph for the Rangers. I would love to hit that. I like Nolan Ryan, so yeah, I could be about finding some Nolan Ryan for you. All right, Jose says he thinks it is one Bo Bichette per... 12 box in our case is what you think. Okay. Well, I somehow didn't know that. I don't know why I don't... I don't remember seeing that anywhere in the information that they send out on these products, but I probably saw it a while ago, so I'll need to refresh my memory on it, I guess. They send out all kinds of detail, of course, when they do the product solicitation, trying to get you to place your order for it, but that's usually several months in advance under normal circumstances. And then, of course, everything we all know went crazy this year because they had to shut everything down for a month or so. And so what, the last time I saw the product solicitation, oh, it's been a while ago now. Jay Allen, you've only heard me say it 4,000 times, not 8,000. <laughs> All right, 4,000 it is then. I'll take your word for it. T-Man says there's a lot of repeats. <laughs> yeah, the base cards, it's a tremendous amount of duplication. There, there are not... It's not a huge checklist for Diamond Kings, so there's a, there is a lot of duplication in the base cards. Now, of course, we hope that we don't have, ooh, plot thickens. We hope that we don't have a ton of duplicates in our hits, but definitely there are plenty to see in the base cards. So we've got a redemption, and you're going to think this is cruel and unusual punishment, and it kind of is. But it stays up there in housekeeping face down, ooh, until the end of the night. And then we flip over any and all redemptions that we have, and that's the point at which we find out who's on the other side. And then we go to Panini and pull up the checklist, and we see what, if anything, it's numbered to. And normally, we would also find our team information on there. In this instance, of course, it's not, when this product, it's not going to give us a team name. It won't give us anything beyond what's on the card, a city name. But anyway, we'll still go there because we always do. There is a Tris speaker that is Boston Red Sox. And here's our downtown. And you guys aren't going to believe this. From downtown in the first half of the case, this I do remember, was Glaber Torres for the Yankees, and the Yankees get the other from downtown. And this one is uh, Aaron Judge, also headed to the Yankees. Mm-hmm, how about that? So that's a nice little insert. Not technically a case hit, but an unofficial case hit. 
As most of you know, Panini is not real. That's the Dodgers Gonzalez framed. Panini very seldom will call anything a case hit. They're usually just going to say it's ultra rare or something to that effect. And sometimes they don't put them in there. And sometimes you get more than one. But generally speaking, I think this one's going to come out about once per. The Minnesota Twins with a Polanco Jersey Kings relic. That will be our second hit out of this box with that little redemption up there representing hit number one out of this box. Charlie Keller, that is a framed one for New York. I think Keller is the Yankees. I think he's a Yankee and not a Met. I'll double check it before I send him out the door, but I do believe that is the case, that he is a Yankee. And Jay Allen, you said um, you didn't even notice all you ever look at closely <laughs> are the hits. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's the way most people are. I mean, generally speaking, a lot of people don't care that much about the base. But just because this set is really unusual in the way that the base is, and there's so much of it that ties back to different teams, then what you might think on the face of it. I always try to go above and beyond in pointing it out in this set because you don't want somebody to expect to receive something and then not get it and have a whole, you know, upsetting experience about it. It's easier just to kind of state what's going on as we go along, I think. Yeah, I tell you what, Jose, he says he was hoping I knew about the... <laughs> about the Bichette. I really don't. I don't remember that, reading that, but I, I'm sure you're probably right. If that's what you heard, that's, I would imagine, probably correct. I'll have to go back through and review that information and see if they mention that. But even if they did, they would never say in what they send us, oh, it's only once per case. If they said anything, they would. They might say it's a short print or something like that. So I may have to research it a little bit. Jay Allen, who'd you get two of the same relic of in Diamond Kings? I don't remember that. Not to say that it doesn't happen. It absolutely does. We all know these days, any of our products, we can have duplication in hits, which is... Frustrating, I think is a nice way to say it. Tops and Panini both have a nasty habit of doing that sometimes. Alrighty. Let's see what waits for us in here. It is a framed Blake Snell for the Tampa Bay Rays. And, of course, I saw Jackie Robinson go by. So, guys, uh, anything that says Brooklyn, of course, the former Brooklyn Dodgers are the current Los Angeles Dodgers. I imagine most people know that, but in case you don't. Here's Mr. Chris Sale. And that is, ooh, relic and autograph. Ha ha, nice. So, how about that, Red Sox, with a Chris Sale Autograph and relic. I was fully expecting that to be autograph or uh, relic only. We got the ink too. So that's sweet. I like that. That makes me happy. I like seeing some veteran ink in there too. It's not all about the rookies. A lot about them, but not all. Jimenez, framed White Sox. Of course, the White Sox got another good, what, well, maybe eventually will be a rookie <laughs> in Robert. The latest proposal that they sent, oh, this one's numbered to 25. It's Don Larson for the Yankees. And it's first in the series, too. So, yay, Yankees with a numbered card. So the latest proposal was from 
the owners to the players, and I believe it called for 78 game, a 78 game schedule, and then they were going to give them until Sunday to say whatever, and the Players Association immediately came back and pretty much said, you can stick it where the sun doesn't shine, so obviously we know that proposal's not going to work either. Abraham Toro for the Houston Astros. So I think it is kind of one of those deals where the players are not going to compromise on anything at this point. I think they've stated this is what we want, this is what we expect, and we're not going to do it for anything less while the clock just keeps ticking. And I think the owners are equally steadfast in their desire to not pay out a massive sum of money for games that aren't played. Colorado Rockies. And Larry Walker with a Jersey Kings relic. So I think it may come down to the old commish who says that one way or another we're going to play ball even if he has to mandate it. And it's beginning to look like he's going to have to mandate it. I think he can only force a 50 game schedule I want to say. That was part of the original deal they made back in the spring when they got the prorated salaries and the year of service time and all that part of that deal gives Manfred the ability to force a season of X number of games which I think is 50 but I was hoping that he wouldn't have to do that they could come up with something that was agreeable to both sides but that's looking less and less likely Jose says, Chris Sale went to your daughter's university. Ah, oh, cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, too bad she didn't know that he was going to become what he became. She could have had him sign a million things. <laughs> Here, Chris, sign about 80 baseballs and some bats and some gloves for me. <laughs> Right? Then you could have paid for part of her education with that. Of course, I guess if they were going through at the same time, that wouldn't have worked. But you could pay for something nice with it. Anyway. T-Man and Jay Allen both say they are dying here. They are not getting what they want to get for their teams. So they're kind of telling me in a nice way, I better step it up. Call forth the mojo to bring on the big hits. Is that the deal? Well, I cannot seem to get that rapper to cooperate with me. Insanity. We have a Logan Webb out. And this is San Francisco Giants. And there's another nice little autograph and relic pairing. Go into San Francisco. Jay Allen, you said this is your last box because you have to get some rest. Got to get a little sleep, catch some Z's. All right, my friend. Well, I will try to send you off to have good dreams by finding a hit before you leave. I know you always uh, feel better going to sleep with a hit. And then if you go to sleep without one. Now see, there's a Beau Bichette. So for whatever it's worth, if he is really a short print or not, we don't know. We think he might be. But anyway, there was one. <laughs> so for what that's worth, there it was. Savali and the Indians with a framed. I'm surprised I even saw that. I kind of zone out a little bit when looking through the massive stacks of base of some. Sometimes I do because I'm also reading chat and doing other things while I'm working on it. So I don't always catch them when they go through. But I did see that one. And more importantly, I see this one. This is a Beau Bichette too. Probably going to be a relic since the other one was signed. But maybe not. Yeah, it is. It's relics. But that's all right. Still nice little hit there for Mr. Beau Bichette and the Blue Jays with quad relics. 
We have a framed Jackie Robinson, Brooklyn Dodgers equals LA Dodgers. So headed, headed that way. All right, let's see. I really wanted to find a cut signature tonight. We still have a few boxes left, though, so maybe we can still find it. That's, that was my goal for the evening. Brock Burke and the Rangers. Since we found that nice one of one in the case we opened on Wednesday, I thought, eh, let's shoot for the cut signature tonight. So I'm still hoping for that myself. So I believe we are halfway home, aren't we? Um, well, Mule, I spun him around there. Where's the, yeah, all right. I'm just reorganizing this. I don't know why, I just am. I want them to face the same way and they're not and it's bugging me, so now they are. <laughs> so we've opened six and we have six left. Part of the six that are left, of course, is the one in my hands getting ready to come out of the box. Six down and six to go. So don't give up yet if we haven't found what we're what you're looking for. Jay Allen is out of here going to get some rest. He's reminding me that the mojo needs to work on the Diamondbacks, the Giants, the Rangers, and the Phillies, and to get something nice for T-Man. You got it. We will process that mojo request and see if we can't make it happen. Yeah, see, and Jay Allen, you did get your hit before you went off to, to sleep, so that helps a little bit, right? A little bit, anyway. J-Man thinks that there's going to be um, a, a Reese Hoskins coming out of here. Or T-Man. Did I say J-Man? I think I said J-Man. <laughs> I meant T-Man. Thinks there's going to be a Reese Hoskins coming out for Jay Allen, who apparently I've now going to just nickname him J-Man. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, that would be nice if we could add to the Reese Hoskins collection there for Jay Allen. Oh boy, T-Man, your wine glass is empty, so all the hits look good. <laughs> how many times has it been filled up tonight, right? That, that probably affects exactly how good the hits look. <laughs> the more times it's been filled before it became empty, the better things look, I expect. That is Randy Johnson. It is framed for the Arizona Diamondbacks as one of our all-time Diamond Kings. Another 3,000 hits. We see lots of those. We see plenty of those, too, which say DK Originals on them. And a little banner at the top. There is Hack Wilson. Good old Hack. And he is framed. And I believe he was the Cubbies. Just said Chicago, but I think Hack Wilson is Cubs. He's another one, of course, I'll double back and make sure before he actually shoots out the door to anybody. Some of these old guys are easier for me to remember than others. The ones that you see every year in here, because there are some you see every year, like Christy Mathewson. I don't think they've I don't think they've produced a set of Diamond Kings ever that didn't have him in it. So he's an easy one to remember. Some of the others. I have to stop and think about. Logan Webb. This should be an autograph. And indeed it is. And look at that. That's also for San Francisco. So the Giants with another one. Jay Allen gave up on us too soon, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Jay Man and T. Allen, you said. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, you know what? Now that you've said that before it's all over with, I probably will have them switched up. I probably will be saying them exactly backwards before it's all said and done. There's a Ted Williams framed all-time Diamond Kings. That goes, of course, to the Red Sox. 
Rizzo in this picture, we talk about these pictures. We did it the other night with Harper, who looks like a fugitive on his. And Rizzo looks like a guy who just is like um, not quite sure what's going on. <laughs> he, looks, he looks like he's waiting to be clued in about something in that picture, doesn't he? I think he does anyway. Vlad Guerrero Jr., Toronto Blue Jays. And it is a Bat Kings relic. So, Blue Jays are starting to heat up a little bit anyway. A little tiny bit. Oh, Jose, your wife agrees about the way Rizzo looks. <laughs> yeah, there is something about... I, first of all, let me start by saying I do like that insert set this year, okay? I think it's a cool insert set. They've designed it to look like the early tobacco cards, and I love the concept of it. And some of the cards look great. Then some of them have artwork where you really just you kind of question it. <laughs> Rizzo is not as bad as Harper. I mean, Rizzo just looks a little on the not quite bright side in his, but Harper just, I don't know, he looks like, well, as someone said the other night, looks like he should be on a most wanted poster hanging in the post office. <laughs> I think I originally called it a cross between the Keystone Cops and a, and a the Keystone Cops and a Western or something, and then someone more aptly pointed out that it was probably a bit more like a wanted poster on Bryce Harper's. But yeah, some of them is a little suspect the artwork. <laughs> I just I can't help but chuckle when I see a few of them. And if you're the player, you're probably like, ah, oh, come on, man. Why didn't you give me that expression? But anyway, T-Man says it looks like he had the mumps. <laughs> Jay Allen says Rizzo looks like he was just abducted by a UFO and probed. <laughs> Oh, man, if you've ever watched South Park, any of you, you will remember um, the episode <laughs> where they probed Cartman. Yeah, so as soon as I read that, that's exactly where my mind went to South Park with Cartman being abducted and probed. <laughs> All right, this is for the Detroit Tigers. I almost said Lions, but it is Tigers. And that is Harvey Coon, Coon, something like that. I don't know how to say his name. Ooh, Barry Larkin. Okay, I'm a Reds fan. I admit it. So this is making me happy. And I feel like it's skinny. So I feel like it's going to be the autograph. I really think it is. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Look at that. It is numbered to 99. I thought it might be numbered lower, but that's still a nice little hit. If you have the Cincinnati Reds tonight... Well, I'm officially jealous because I'm loving that Barry Larkin card. So, congratulations if you have the Reds. Meanwhile, if you have the Reds, you're probably going, Man, I wanted Aristides Aquino. But hey, I'm going to tell you what. The Barry Larkin is a nice hit, no matter. A framed Buster Posey for the Giants. But then again, if you're buying into this set, you probably appreciate the veteran players or you wouldn't likely be buying into this set. So this isn't as much where people are super rookie focused to the exclusion of all others. So maybe you do like it if you've got the reds. There is Goose Goslin. Now he is a Washington senator and he played in the early 1900s. It might tell us somewhere on the back there. Um, yeah, 1928. So he was in the early 1900s when the Washington Senators in that group that ultimately became the Twins. Anybody that played Senators from 19, I think 1901 or 1902, all the way up through 1960 are the ones that became the Twins. Then from 1961 to 19-whatever, 70-ish, that's the group that became 
the Rangers. So that guy, a twin. Yeah, pretty sure that's right. <laughs> As I go over it in my head thinking, is that right? Yeah, I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Whit Merrifield and the Kansas City Royals with a Bat King's Relic. Oh, you were still listening so you could hear the second hit. <laughs> yeah, I know, Cartman. Do you remember that episode, Jay Allen? <laughs> that episode was hilarious. South Park used to be so funny. I haven't watched it in years, but when that first came out, oh, I was living in California at the time. And my friend, well, I have a few friends out there, but my friend who was my roommate at that time in California, she she's uh, an actress. And so someone had given her a bootleg copy of those days. Everything was still VHS. So a bootleg VHS copy of what, what actually started South Park which was something that these two guys had made that was supposed to be like a video Christmas greeting kind of thing <laughs> for a presumed studio execs to be able to send out news or whatever. And it was um, Jesus and Santa Claus battling to the death. That was their idea of this <laughs> a video Christmas card at that time. And so we had gotten a hold of that, or she had gotten a hold of that, and we had watched that and just loved it. We just laughed. We watched it, on, probably, if we watched it once, we probably saw it 30 times. So when South Park, of course, that caught on, we all know, South Park became serious, still on the air, etc. But so when South Park was set to premiere, she was up in Napa filming a movie. And I flew up there. I mean, I was just in L.A., so it's not like it was a long flight. But I flew up there so that we could watch um, South Park, the premiere of South Park. <laughs> that is how much we loved that show. So, yeah, we at one time probably, either one of us could have probably quoted you just about any episode of South Park. But that's been many years ago now, so couldn't do that now. But I could then. So, anyway... And how did all that start with J. Allen saying somebody looked like they'd been probed by aliens? <laughs> yeah, that's a, you can thank J. Allen for that long story. But anyway. And San Francisco Giants, man. What's up? They keep hitting. This is Jalen Davis. And a nice looking set of relics with it or group or pair. And it is numbered to 25. I sound like I've got an empty wine glass, don't I? Group, pair, rel... <laughs> I couldn't quite figure out what to call those relics, could I? But yeah, sadly, I don't have a full or an empty glass of anything. Except I got a bottle of water over there. That's it. There is Mickey Cochran again. The guy's coming out all over the place tonight. Another framed one goes to the A's. Good old Philadelphia A's. Whoops, there's Mule again. And of course, we'll be using random.org to give out all those Mule settles at the end of the night. So, we'll get those squared away. A Ken Griffey Jr. Sweet. It's a Reds kind of night, although I'm sure this will go to the Mariners. You know I'm always going to try to claim him as a Red because he was a Red at one time and, he's, and I love him. <laughs> He does come out on as the Reds on this one. Ha ha, look at that. Number to 50. Usually, Mr. Griffey comes out for the Mariners, rightfully so. But he's a Red on that one. So Cincinnati, you have a Barry Larkin autograph, and then you have a Ken Griffey Jr. relic. So not too shabby so far tonight for Cincy. And Randy Johnson tried to jump ship. He doesn't seem to be any worse for the wear, though. Trying to escape. Didn't want to be seen in the lineup. But anyway. All right. There is uh, Robert. White Sox framed. If we ever get to see him play. If we ever get to see anybody play again. He should be quite good. 
And there's a framed Mel Ott. It says New York. It's the New York Giants. So San Francisco Giants. He's another guy that shows up every year in Diamond Kings. They're like fascinated with, with the, the New York Giants. <laughs> always have Matheson in there. They always have Ott in there. There's a couple of others every year. You can just plan on them being in here. Someone at Panini was a big fan of the New York Giants. Jose Ken Griffey Jr. lives in your town. Do you know where he lives? So I can stalk him? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go stalk him. But I would be really tempted. If I knew where he lived, I think I might kind of hope I caught him at the grocery store or something. Oh, look, Ken Griffey Jr., I just happen to be carrying around this stack of your baseball cards. <laughs> well, while here in the grocery, would you like to sign some for me? J. Allen says Griffey's autograph in here is for Seattle and his relic is for the Reds. Well, that's nice. So at least he's got some for both. I can live with that. Oh, Jose's telling us where he lives. He lives in Windermere, Florida. Oh, but he's not nice? Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> then I guess I wouldn't be carrying a stack of his cards around in the grocery store stalking him. He'd probably call the police on me or something, so. Well, never mind then if he's a big you-know-what. T-Man says he should have donated his uh, money to the homeless shelter. <laughs> well, T-Man, don't give up yet. We still may find some hits for you. Don't give up yet. We're trying. I'm trying, man. I'm trying very hard. Dang, Jose's living in the nice neighborhood. Prince Fielder lives in his neighborhood, too. So we already know, then, if, if anybody wants to crash somebody's summer barbecue we need to go crash the one that jose's having because he's in the neighborhood with um all the ball players <laughs> so are you gonna invite us all over for for uh fourth of july <laughs> we'll, all come, we'll all show up at your house see there it is there's our most wanted poster look right there <laughs> there is just something wrong with that i who i don't even know Somebody had a few glasses of wine when they painted that, I guess, or sketched it or whatever they did to it. Tyrone Taylor, framed for the Milwaukee Brewers. He, oh, Jose says he sees a lot of the retired players in his neighborhood bar. Ooh, so there, see, but see what he did there? Jose is, he's on his game. He's basically gently pushing us away from thinking about showing up at his house for 4th of July and saying, hey, planting that seed in your mind, go to my neighborhood bar instead. <laughs> there is Tyrone Taylor that is coming out for the Milwaukee Brewers with a relic. I see what you did there and I like it. I, I like that. I like it. That was good. A little subliminal messaging there like, sure, come on down. They're all at our neighborhood bar. <laughs> Hey, you never know if we all ever, if we can ever fly again without wearing masks and hazmat suits, we might just hit you up and come down to your neighborhood bar. You never know. All right. How about this, Jay Allen? There's a little Alec to add to your Phillies collection, and he is numbered to 99. I know you probably have a bunch of Alec already, but ultimately he's going to be a pretty good one to have, I think. So he might be the next guy that you decide to collect and have hundreds of his autographs. Maybe. Could be. Could be a thing. And there's Jimmy Fox for the Boston Red Sox for Mr. Fox. Jay Allen, you think Ken Griffey Jr.'s made shops for him? 
Well, I guess maybe. But you would think being a ball player and being in Florida, those two things combined, I would think you could probably go out and do stuff without getting mobbed. Maybe not, but I would think so. There is a Billy Williams framed for the Cubbies. I wouldn't think that it would be hazardous to his health to go out and do stuff, but maybe he's just lazy. I mean, I don't know. Could be. <laughs> he's like, nah, I don't do anything for myself. I'm rich. Could be. T-Man has two county sheriffs on his street, and you can leave your doors unlocked at night. Well, um, that is good. I would never, ever, ever, ever leave my door unlocked. You know why? Because I got all your cards in here. That's right. You're never, ever, ever going to leave my door unlocked. I don't even leave my door unlocked if I go outside to, like, rake the leaves in the yard. Uh-uh. The door is locked. It's got alarms all over the place. Mm-mm, brother. No matter who, and we do have some police that live in this neighborhood too, but even so, it's locked up tight around here like Fort Knox. Wade Anderson, he says Kentucky's in the house. That's right. Gotta represent my state of Kentucky. Oh, well, Jay Allen, if the Phillies only have two autographs in here, that's not too bad then if we got Alec out for you tonight. That's pretty good. Jose says Prince Fielder goes to the sushi place with no runners. That's the see now I would think, yeah, that's kind of how I would think it would be for those guys. That I mean, sure, people are probably gonna point and stare to a certain extent, but it happens anywhere for celebrities and athletes and things, but I wouldn't think they would be overwhelmed with people getting in their face in Florida. So I could totally see how they would kind of be able to go and hang out, especially if people are used to them see them often in that kind of deal, then you'd only have to worry about touristy type folks. People like me. Reggie Jackson and the New York Yankees with a framed autograph. Or not autograph, with a framed card for the Yankees. Got autographs on the brain. Pete Alonso, the polar bear. New York Mets get a call with Pete Alonso relics. Yeah, I'm with you, Jose. He says doors locked, security on. Yep, I'm with you. That is exactly how it is around here, too. I don't mess around with that at all. Because you just never know. I'm not going to take the chance. Justin Dunn, Seattle Mariners. And nice looking relics, autograph. And if I can turn it the correct way. Did I have it the right way the first time? See, they're all sixes and all nines. It's hard to tell. But I think it is number 66 of 99, which you don't see very often. Uh, 66, I mean, well, obviously you see it some because there's always going to be a 66 if there's 99. But I personally don't see a lot of 66 of 99. And then I wasn't sure which way was facing up and which wasn't. Pixel Arts. These come out, I think, on average, about once every 12 boxes, something like that. Trey Mancini and the Baltimore Orioles on that one. I don't think we'll find another one of those. We could, but I wasn't expecting, not expecting to. Another framed Hack Wilson. And what else? What else is in here? We're getting close, too. We've only got one more box, so we've got we've to get our mojo fired up for a few of these teams, don't we? 
some of you that are still waiting on us to have some luck for you. Now, see, I think that that's a cool looking one right there. That one's cool looking. Some of the others, well, we know. But that one I like. Of the big hurt. Who currently is doing strange commercials for something called Nugenics or Eugenics or something Genics. Johnny Pesky for the Red Sox. And still looks like he's in good enough shape that if you called him, he could just walk out and play ball tomorrow. So, that's probably why they use him for those commercials, isn't it? Because he looks like that. Jay Allen, you have a few deputies that live around you, and you're related to a few of them, but you still locked your door. I don't blame you. I, I agree with you on that. Thomas is calling it out for Seattle. That's right. We did finally see something uh, come out for your Mariners, didn't we? And so Prince Fielder goes for runs in the neighborhood, just hanging out. Nobody bothers him, I'm sure. So that is cool. I do like that. I think it would be hard if you were uber famous, truthfully. I mean, if you're a, a LeBron James, Michael Jordan kind of figure in the sports world, there are many others, but just for example, those two guys, that's got to be hard because you really can't go out and do anything. People are either pointing, staring, talking about you, or overtly coming up to you, interrupting you, wanting your autograph. I mean, I would think it would be hard to do much of anything. Hard to eat out, hard to go get your groceries, hard to walk outside and mow your yard, hard to do anything in those instances. And I would not want to live like that. It's probably like being on COVID lockdown your whole life, sort of. You'll kind of not able to freely move about anyway. All right. Um, Jay Allen wonders how Mancini is doing with his cancer. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that since it all took place, of course. That is numbered to 99 Ted Williams for the Boston Red Sox. So probably, I guess most of you know that in a routine physical type situation in what was originally spring training this year, that they found something with Trey Mancini and it turned out he had cancer. And I think it was a rather high stage, wasn't it? I've forgotten now, but I want to say it was not a stage one or two, like a stage three or four cancer. There's Jose Ramirez for the Cleveland Indians. So he's been undergoing treatment for that. And I haven't heard how it's going. Number to 25, the Oakland A's. We usually see a lot of them. We haven't seen as many of them tonight, but there's one. It's Jesus Lazardo. But he's such a young man. I certainly hope that he's able to recover from that. Kirby Puckett, twins, with a framed card. And a Sean Murphy. See, I wished it into existence, didn't I? Right as I said, we usually see a lot of A's and haven't seen many tonight. Well, there is one with a Sean Murphy autograph for the Oakland A's. Speak of the devil. And this is a framed Diaz, Miami Marlins. And let's see what else our little last box mojo is going to kick out to us here. Hopefully something else that we like yet to be found. Now keep in mind, we do still have a redemption we'll be flipping over in a minute. You see it up there in housekeeping. And then we'll also use random.org and we'll find a home for the Mule Settles cards. 
And the last thing we see is for the Houston Astros with a Justin Verlander relic card. So the Astros, the last one we're bringing home tonight. Well, at least the last relic or autograph. We might might yet have something else in here. A little Mookie Betts, and he was still Boston on that. Mookie's one that's in here, I think, some in both directions, but that one did say Boston on it. All right. Yes, I know. You're waiting to see who's on the other side of that redemption. Me too, because I didn't peek either. I'm just setting up what we need to recap and getting a little organized here, and then we're going to flip it over and find out what's what. Find out what's going on with it. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. It is Shohei Otani, Angels. Woohoo! T-Man, there you go. And look at that. He writes, no Braves, no Angels, no Mojo. He gave up too soon. That's what happens. People give up too soon. Can never give up till the last card's flipped, my friend. Quad Material Signature Gold. You know what that means? That means it's probably going to be pretty low numbered. Mm-hmm. T-Man gave up on us. Too soon, he did. All right, let's go check it out. Let's see if Panini will tell us what it's numbered to. They should. They better. We want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. All right, our card set is DK Quad Material Signatures Gold. I already had the rest of it set up in case we found redemptions. DK Quad Material Signature Gold. Quad Material Signature. Where's gold? There. Whoops. Yeah, there. Card number eight. Shohei Otani number two. 49. The big four nine for Shohei. Mm-hmm. How you like it now? Now you're not feeling all sad, are you? Mm-mm. I bet you're not. I'm going to look over there and you're going to say, yeah, now I'm happy. We'll see. All right. So... Mule Settles, there, listen, there may be more of these base cards that are stacked over there with our other base cards. I may not have caught all of them as we were going through live. If I did catch it, obviously I sat it over there. And if I didn't, no worries. When I am sorting it uh, to ship out, of course, I would find any others. And I would add them to our little pile here. But what we are going to do is give this whole little pile of these out using random.org. Now, when I use random, I do it the same way every single time. When we have 10 or more items in a list, we do random uh, one single time, and that's it. When we have nine or fewer, well, we need to stop off somewhere else first, though, don't we? When we have nine or fewer items in a list, we do random three different times, and only the third random counts. So in this case, we have 30 teams that we'll be pasting in there, meaning 10 or more. So we're going to run random one single time. And then whoever is in that number one spot after I randomize this list is going to get any of those Mule Settles cards that we found in this break. All right, so we'll scroll through here. Everyone's going to get an opportunity to take a look. You can see that all the teams were properly cop, cop blah, 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 properly <laughs> copied and pasted in there. And good luck, everybody. It is coming up, maybe. Is it not going to run? What the heck? What is going on tonight? My computer is so difficult tonight. Finally, Tampa Bay Rays. That's who's going to end up with it. Tampa Bay Rays getting this little uh, team bag full of cards. And again, if I find any other Settles cards when I sort, they'll just be added to this bag. But meantime, let me label it up real quickly so that I do not forget. And then we will do a recap of our hits in here. And following that, I will once again put up spreadsheet information. If you missed it earlier, you're going to get another opportunity to take a look at your anticipated shipping date and then we'll also take a look at what's coming up in the days ahead so all of that on tap next but the recap is first number to 25 oakland a's lazardo 
We have a Ted Williams for the Red Sox, and that one is numbered to 99. Pixel art, I put this in here because, you know, they tend to fall about once every 12 boxes. And that is Trey Mancini for the Orioles. And we have a numbered Don Larson to 25. That goes to the Yankees. And then this is another one that's kind of unofficially shows up about once every 12 boxes. It is from downtown, the Yankees and Aaron Judge. Okay, now let's look at our relics. Javi Baez and the Cubbies. A Verlander comes out for the Astros. You have Pete Alonso and the Mets. There's uh, Tyrone Taylor, and he showed up for the Milwaukee Brewers, so we didn't send them home empty-handed. Ken Griffey Jr. with a pair of relics numbered to 50 for my little Cincinnati Reds. Yay, Reds. And this, I didn't catch this earlier. That's numbered to 25, that Whit Merrifield. I didn't even see the numbering first time through, I don't think. Lost in the design down there, but Whit Merrifield is numbered to 25 for the Kansas City Royals. Then we have a Vlad Guerrero Jr. relic that's going to the Blue Jays. And behind that is a Bichette relic that also goes to the Blue Jays. Then it is Larry Walker coming out for the Colorado Rockies. And Polanco comes out for the Minnesota Twins. Next up, it is Gary Carter, Montreal Expos, which, of course, former Expos are the current Nationals. An Aaron Judge, Jersey Kings for the New York Yankees. Rolling around two autographs. Well, this was worth waiting to flip over. Yes, it was. This is our redemption. It's going to be for the Angels. It is numbered to 49, will be numbered to 49, and it is Shohei Otani. Mm-hmm, worth waiting on. Sean Murphy for the Oakland A's. This is a nice Justin Dunn, and it is numbered to 99 for the Mariners. And then there's a little Alec to keep Jay Allen company, numbered to 99 for the Phillies. And here is Jalen, numbered to 25. That's going to go to Jay Allen, too. That's uh, the Giants. This sweet little Barry Larkin autograph, I still kind of love it, numbered to 99, headed to the Cincinnati Reds. Logan Webb. San Francisco Giants. It is numbered to 49. Then we have another Logan Webb right behind it. So I didn't even realize we had two in a row, but we do because there it is. <laughs> so it's another one for the San Francisco Giants. The Red Sox managed to pull a little Chris Sale ink and relic. So Red Sox, nice Chris Sale. Then we have Daza here for the Colorado Rockies and uh, Berea for the Washington Nationals. That one is numbered to 25 up there in the lower or in the upper right hand corner. And I don't know that I saw that one the first time through either, but it is numbered to 25. And then you have a Kyle Lewis for the Mariners and that one numbered to 49. So there you go. There is another case of Diamond Kings in the books. So let's do a little quick breeze through uh, what you need to know spreadsheet-wise in regard to shipping, etc. We'll just make a quick little pass through that. So Wednesday, everything should be out the door on or before Wednesday is my anticipation. I certainly would not expect it to be past Wednesday unless something really super unexpected uh, takes place. Otherwise, I'm hopeful it would be before Wednesday, but I don't think it would be after that. And of course, uh, lots of cards in this break and they all ship. So every team is going to have a nice package of cards coming of some sort. And we don't have to worry about consolation cards as a result. And here's what it looks like in the days ahead, tomorrow night, Sunday night, both off nights. Uh, on Monday, we will come back with score football. We're going to break a six box half case of it. Veteran base is its own bidding category in there. Veteran base does not ship to the teams, but it does have a separate bidding category. 
and those are loose boxes from a shared case. On Tuesday night, we're going to break select baseball. We have been breaking it by the half case. We're just going to dive right into the full case on Tuesday night and just go for the fences, if you will. Then on Wednesday, Noir Basketball by the full case. That's already scheduled and up and running on eBay. And I may or may not add Prism Baseball to that night. That's why it says TBA in there. I may throw up a three-day listing for that if I can get some kind of confirmation that's really going to show up on Wednesday. And if not, then we'll delay it and break it later when I know for sure it's going to be here. One or the other. And I guess then that's got me covered for tonight. So as always, I appreciate you all being here, spending part of your Friday evening doing a little bidding and breaking and chatting with me. So thank you everyone for that. And enjoy your weekend. I hope that you have a nice one, that you stay safe and healthy and happy, and that you'll come back and see me next week. I'll be back at it again, of course, on Monday night. So hopefully I'll see you somewhere, uh, somewhere along the way. And uh, I guess until then, take care.